Joining us now, he's our inside guy when it comes to college and pro football scouting, the NFL draft, and identifying the next great NFL prospects at BYU. He is the senior director of College Football Network. Cam Meller joins us. And Cam, you've gone big time, my friend. Congrats on the big merger with Absolute Sports. Frankly, BYU fans want to know how this is going to affect content and your job and your potential impact on BYU Sports Nation in the future. It only helps. So thanks for the uh, the mention. Obviously, it's a big deal for Pro Football Network. It's a silently very large deal for College Football Network, though, because we get to now officially focus solely on college football. So uh, 133 teams with the lofty goal of being equally covered. So that uh, might include a little partial bias to the state of Utah, most specifically <laughs> the, uh, the five letters in the Pro Football. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's good things for College Football Network. It's terrific things for me personally. I appreciate the, the mention as well. Uh, but Pro Football Network, College Football Network, Absolute Sports and Sports Kita ultimately you know, getting better and getting bigger because of this. Fantastic stuff. Okay, Pro Day tomorrow, NFL Draft coming up in uh, about a month and a couple of days, right? Um, Jaron Hall stock. The perception is that maybe it's falling just a little bit. Didn't participate in, in the 40 and the other drills at the Combine. Perhaps he does tomorrow. We will see. I'm told, uh, you know, he, he could. Um, what do you think of that perception? Is his stock falling? Do you feel like he's still going to be drafted? I think absolutely still drafted. Uh, I don't think that's in question at this point. Uh, I think the his image, I think, is falling just because there's that middle tier of quarterbacks that's sort of falling by the wayside right now. Uh, I think uh, in the same vein, we're not hearing about Tanner McKee from Stanford. We're not hearing a whole lot about Jake Hayner from Fresno State. And right now, Jaron, Jake, and Tanner are all battling to be that sixth quarterback drafted. Uh, as we've seen now, the, the fever pitch uh, for Hendon Hooker is reaching its highest moment since his torn ACL. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah saying he's going to go in the first round now, likely. So you have five quarterbacks and all those five quarterback needy teams likely drafting in the first round. So then that really shifts that priority on where they're drafting from there. And you have to look at a team that might need a veteran or have a veteran quarterback that might need an influx of youth uh, in their quarterback room or maybe a little question marks as a backup. So right now it looks like Jared, Jake, Hayner, and ultimately Tanner McKee are, are battling it out to be the sixth, seventh, and eighth quarterbacks drafted. Uh, and where they go, it's definitely at this point round four or beyond, but definitely day day three for Jared Hall right now, I think helping his stock could be a pro day performance where he runs and tests well and just overall looks healthy. Um, but again, as all these offseason events are, the interview process and who he talks to off the field will be just as important. Cam, it sounds like the range for Jaron Hall and those middle-tier quarterback guys is, as you said, fourth round, maybe to late sixth round. What can Jaron Hall do tomorrow during BYU's Pro Day to course correct, for lack of a better phrase, and improve his stock? Show growth from the last time he talked to these same teams, personnel departments. It may not be the same people, but you bet, definitely bet they have their same notes uh, on Jaron on every player. And so if he's shown growth from what he talked to them about at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, at the Combine in Indianapolis, and if he's able to really show growth, whether it's playbook install, whether it's knowledge around the, the, the game or the what they do in the NFL level and how that would translate, I think that's probably more important for him than on the field. Now, obviously, if he if he runs well, that's, a, that's another thing. I think that that's more for social media. Uh, we know how fast he is. We know how athletic he is. And we know how talented his arm is. And I think it's just a matter of winning the off-field battles so to speak or the off-field conversations for for jared to course correct himself i think maybe a grain of salt with what the the media might be saying nationally right now because i bet you the nfl teams are, have not wavered too much on him so he doesn't have to prove himself physically at BYU's pro day tomorrow in your opinion no i, I wouldn't say so it would be a benef benefit to everybody uh, maybe beneficial to him to really secure himself show he's healthy i guess maybe that if that's a concern but obviously they, they go through the medical rigmarole at, in Indianapolis. So if he passed through medicals, then he's perfectly fine on uh, these NFL team sports. Cam Meller is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk about the other two BYU prospects that we anticipate will be drafted, beginning with Blake Freeland. We've seen his stock fall as well, looking at Mel Kuyper specifically, who is one of the louder voices in the NFL draft preparation. Where do you see Blake Freeland after a ridiculous NFL combine in some respects, yet He's still receiving some significant criticisms and seems to be settling in late second, early third round. Where do you have him right now? 
that's where he is right now for me. And I, honestly, I don't think it's really changed. Uh, I think he's corrected himself. If we to use your to use Jeremy's expression, course correct. He corrected himself after what I would call a mediocre or below average senior bowl performance. We saw some discrepancies in his game. He's we know he's athletic. He, you're not a former quarterback and, and not going to be an athletic dude uh, at his size as well. But the one thing that he showcased at the senior bowl was he got a little bit out of balance quickly and some of the, some of the speed rushers were able to get by him pretty quickly in those one on one situations because he stood up too quick. And so I think that's coaching. That's coachable. And I think if you look at it, that might have hurt his he was he went viral at the combine for his ability. He went viral at the at the senior bowl for his how he lost some of those battles. Uh, and so I think coaches look at that and you look at what uh, what translates over well, what's coachable and, and how he lost in those battles at the combine. Uh, that's coachable. So sink him down a little bit. Lower his hips, uh, use his strength and his athleticism to his advantage. And he's absolutely a day day two, uh, middle of round two guy for me, if not the early stages of round two. Okay, we know you love Puka Nakua. We all do around here, of course. Where do you see him at this point, about a month away from the draft? You know, the team's going to take a flyer on him. Uh, he is a flyer himself, right? And so Puka, to me, is athletic as they come. Honestly, has a, probably an underappreciated route tree that he can run, but ultimately I don't have to tell BYU fans that were in the end zone during some of his uh, immaculate receptions, but he's got crazy awesome contested catch ability. So to me, he's a guy who fits in perfectly as a wide receiver three, wide receiver four in an NFL system. And, you know, gone are the days where a wide receiver three or four only sees, you know, 20 targets a year. These guys are 50, 60 target guys a year. So to me, the, the ceiling for Puka is the, the early stages of day three for a team that's fallen in love with his athletic ability and, and the receiving traits that he does possess. Uh, more realistic, probably round six, round seven for him, but absolutely a team with with a need or, or depth at the wide receiver position should be looking at Puka Nakua. Is Puka Nakua the guy that can improve his stock the most tomorrow during BYU's Pro Day? And if it's not him, who is it? It's absolutely Puka, right? So showcase he's healthy, showcase he can run, really put on display his, not just the 40, not just straight line speed. That's good. But honestly, it's the 10-yard split. It's the 20-yard in between the 40. And then ultimately, it's the short area drills and then him running routes. If he can showcase the full route tree, his hands are not going to be in question. It's the health. It's the longevity of his career. And it's ultimately how quickly he can win off the line of scrimmage. And I think we know Puka does that well. He, he's a weapon when he's got the ball in his hands. And so short area quickness drills and him showcasing he can get open will vault his stock, not just by the NFL draft teams or the boards, uh, but also fans and media as well. So unlike Jaron, he may need to prove himself physically tomorrow? A little bit. I, I think because of how many games he had missed in his career uh, and how long his career spanned and where, you know, Jaron didn't have that question. He played under Zach. He learned under Zach. And there he was. Uh, Puka with the transfer, figuring out where he where he sort of aligns and, and how healthy he is and, and how mature he is, I don't think will be a question, but ultimately proving himself or durability uh, and, and just overall from when they saw him at the combine to when they've seen him now or at the at senior bowl uh, to where he is now. We discussed yesterday the likes of Kingsley Suomataia, Keaton Slovis, and Isaac Rex, among a few others when we were talking about the best potential NFL prospects for BYU next year. Kingsley feels like the sure thing top NFL prospect for BYU, Cam. I'm assuming you agree with that. If he is number one, who's number two in that conversation? Kingsley is number one right now. He's on the early watch list for 2024's top offensive line. Um, it's we have our we have our options that we know, uh, but Kingsley's up there on that friends level where you want to watch him. And if he shows the growth, that we all think he, there's the traits he has and the athletic ability and the strength that if he can showcase that again and ascend, you know, he's a guy who is early, early draft consideration for 2024. And then the next, I, I hate to go chalk, but let's face it. There was a time that Keaton Slovis was widely seen as a potential number one overall pick. Why? That ability is still there. I, there you don't, it doesn't just leave. I, I know the pit offense did not do him any favors. And he's sort of bounced around and he's not elevated talent that is pretty awesome around him. Uh, looking right at those USC receivers he had, uh, it's there's still the talent and the processing ability that Keaton Slovis has. And if he can sort of get back to where he was in those early stages of his freshman year, sophomore year at USC, absolutely Keaton is a guy who becomes number two, if not number one. Hey, that'd be great because you got to have great quarterback play in 2023 and BYU's in the Big 12 and this dude's been in the fight before. Okay, when it comes to the other guys uh, with BYU's pro prospects outside of the big three that we discussed, 
Is there a guy that sticks out as the next best prospect who could sneak into the draft or perhaps uh, among several hopefully undrafted free agent types? You know, to me, I have a few undrafted, we call them priority free agents, and it's all the offensive linemen. Whether it, to, to me, I've spoken to a few people and they just look at it as, hey, I'm going to draft, I'm going to draft, or I'm not going to, if I don't draft, I'm going to sign uh, one of these BYU guys. It stems from the, the previous regime. Um, and and how well they've been coached. I know it's sort of a broad scoping uh, way of looking at it, but that's how they do it, right? They, they look at where these guys have been and, and who they've been coached by and how they can get there. So uh, it's probably a priority free agent. I would say we're stuck with three drafted BYU players right now at this point, uh, but priority free agents on the offensive line coming come in this uh, very quickly. You know, those guys that get announced very quickly after round seven's over, those are that's going to be right here for BYU. Okay, I'm going to ask you about two guys specifically. Um, we, we know you love Peyton Wilgar. And in fact, I'm going to throw in a third name. There's Chris Brooks, the BYU running back, who is a transfer as well. And then a guy like Gunnar Romney. Where do guys like Peyton Wilgar, Chris Brooks, and Gunnar Romney fit into the conversation of pro football and their futures? Chris Brooks had to have sort of a Zach Charbonnet career uh, from UCLA. They're upright runners with a little bit of speed that is sort of deceptive. I think Brooks, and he's a guy. Maybe if the running, if this was a few years back, uh, with with his running style and his athleticism, and ultimately the durability he might possess at the NFL level, is a guy. He's a you know an early down runner in the NFL. If he gets a good situation as one of his, I think it'll be a priority free agent as well. Uh, if you get him a good situation, he could see early success. Uh, Gunnar Romney needs some help and needs a good situation as well. I think to me, there's limits and limitations to his full route tree in the NFL. Um, and the speed is great. We know Gunner's fast, but it's ultimately not going to be maybe fast enough for the NFL. So how he won in college with BYU was, you know, the speed and then dominating at the catch point. It might not be good enough in the NFL with the new age quarterbacks. And then Wilgar as well. You know, I love Peyton to death. I love, I love his story. I love his family. Uh, and ultimately, I think the injury concerns and the longevity of a guy who does his best in coverage, you know, it's he needs to do all three facets from the linebacking skill set to to really see the enough snaps to to have his potential shown in the NFL. He's got his work cut out for him, unfortunately. Great stuff from the senior director of College Football Network, Cam Meller, a longtime friend of the program. Cam, congratulations again on the promotion. Yeah, baby. Just save time for us when you get a little busier, okay? Trust me, I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid, as they say. So I'm not going anywhere, guys. Don't worry. I nice love it. Water. Look at that water bottle. We no, love product it. Product placement at its finest, guys. I promise. I'm not going anywhere. Cam, great to talk to you. Thanks, man. My pleasure, guys. Thanks as always.